DJ Z Trip. This is the influence of hip hop. And right now, uh, I'd like to introduce you all to somebody who I think is very special. Um, he's a, a creative giant. He's somebody that has, I think, moved the needle. I know moved the needle in hip hop, uh, changed the whole way the game is gone, and uh, rewritten a lot of the rules. Um, and, and Marshall's here too. <laughs> Yeah. My man Eminem, yeah. my man Marshall right. Mathers in the place to be. <laughs> so, yo, welcome. welcome. Thank you. And, um, you know, so the way I want to start this is, you know, the first question, the first thing I want to ask you is, how does a little kid in Detroit get into this rap thing? Like, like what, what happened? What made you, like, I know with me, it was about... The first time I heard kids be empowered and made me want to just, you know, with everything I was going through, I wanted to feel powerful and it helped me be powerful. What made you get into hip hop? How did you get into this thing? You, <laughs> you, Run DMC, Beastie Boys, Ice T. Um, I mean, that was Fat Boys. Like, mm. just, I don't know, it's just something about the music spoke to me. It just, it was so new and different and refreshing and you know you also didn't really have to be able to sing mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah to, you know so i don't know something about the music man it was it, it just felt empowering and it just felt like i don't know it just spoke to me as a kid like i i wanted to be like you you know what i'm saying like i hope that doesn't sound weird no no nah, nah, I, I get it i absolutely wanted to be like you i wanted to be like run dmc like i i just I don't know, something about the, it was the energy and the, you could just say what you want to say and, you know, and you could talk about your life and you could talk about shit that bothers you and all that, you know, I just, I don't know, something, I just gravitated towards it and I never strayed from the first day I heard a rap song, so. Um, you know, when you first started writing, what were you thinking about? Like, what was the, you know what I mean? What was the... Not the subject, but like like when you first picked up the pen, you know, um, what was it? Man, I was probably like 11 or 12 years old. I think I was 11 and 11 or 12. And I, I wrote a rhyme that was the first rhyme I wrote. I was at my great aunt at this house and it sounded exactly like bad. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't remember exactly what the rhyme I, This one rhyme sticks in my head Something, something Before you can blink I'll have a hundred million rhymes I'm like a ship you will sink <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was, was yeah. my first uh, I love that And you know when, when we think about you as a writer When I think about you as a writer um, I think First of all, before we get into, forget the style for a minute. We'll get into that a little later. You know, your stylistic cadences and all that. But the transparency, um, your willingness to talk about vulnerabilities, your willingness to talk about things that most people are afraid to talk about. That takes a lot of courage. I understand writing. You know, it takes courage to say certain things. Um, where does that come from? How did you develop that? Um, I mean, part of it was just going through my own experiences in life, mm -hmm. you know, and the other part was watching everyone else. You know, I, I, my homework was hip hop. Like I didn't have, I didn't go to school. I just, I, I would rather just rap. So that's pretty much all I did. So watching like, you know, you run DMC, the Beastie Boys, Big Daddy Kane, Cool G Rap, Master Ace, like just watching like and 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 the way that when you guys first came out, it was the the wordplay and the I don't know, just listening to listening to it was interesting to watch to watch you and see your range as a writer and see that you could make a song about you could make a love song. You could make a song for the dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and, and your range as a writer was so incredible. And then when you didn't drop an album for a couple of years, then rap started advancing a little more. Then you came out, advanced it again. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was so crazy mm -hmm. to just watch it. Like, and I don't know. It was crazy because you, you to me were like, you could just do whatever anyone else was doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you could do that and then you could do the shit better 
And watching that, like, and and especially when you came back when Mama said knock you out. Mm -hmm. Man, and fuck damage, damage. Like, I'm like, yo, did he... You wrote that? Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Man, Definitely. that seemed like a spur of the moment thing. I always wondered that because I'm like, God damn, he just in the middle of the song screaming da damage and the energy of it was like, God damn. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Like you wanted to, I want to fuck my room up. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I absolutely wrote that shit. It was like, you know, it was that like that stream of consciousness, you know what I mean? Yeah, I just, um, I, I didn't know if you were like freestyling it. I didn't know like, I was just like, yeah, I wrote it, but I wrote it like, you know, right in the zone. You know what I mean? Like right there, like in the moment it, of the it, zone. Yeah. Like, you know, I didn't. It wasn't intellectual. You know, it was no brain power. It was all just ink and feel and feel. Yeah, you know, because that's the thing. You know, you want to write it from the place of feeling. So, like, let's take a song, um, like Stan, right? Which is. You know, which when you're taking a hard line, a hard line on the fan, and Stan became pop popular culture. Like it ended up being Stan. Like right. ended up being something that bled into popular culture. What was the what was the thought process? Were you? Did you feel like yo? I'm insulting this dude. Like like what, you know what I mean? Like I was always like that was like the ballsiest shit in the world. It was like, you know, what was the thought process on that? There actually. Um I'm sure you probably experienced this too coming up. Like, when I first got in the game, I didn't understand a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand, like, uh, you know, when you would see, like, if, 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 if you were walking outside the venue after a show mm -hmm. and then you saw some fans and you took some pictures and shit, there's always going to be somebody that you don't have a chance to get to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and that was one of the things that I started seeing. It was my first experience, really, with it. It was mm -hmm. like, what the fuck is this? Like, mm -hmm. and people wanting me to sign shit. I don't get it. Like, it's a signature. <laughs> like, you know, I, I didn't understand it. And, and I think it was a combination of what I was going through at that time mm -hmm. and experiencing fame for the first time and all that stuff. Like, I, I think that uh, it when I got that beat from Mark the 45 King mm -hmm. um, with the Dido hook on it, I was mm -hmm. just like, put your picture on my wall. Like, I just pictured, you know, like, that's what, that's what I did as a kid. Mm -hmm. Like, how I felt when you first came out, Run DMC first came out, like, how I felt, like, just my, my entire room, walls were covered up to the ceiling with pictures, word up, mm -hmm. every rap magazine there was, you know, and I put myself in the shoes of, like, worship you and worshiping Run DMC and like like thought like how can somebody worship me though you know what I'm saying it was, right right it was right weird right, to right. Me, like, yeah 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 that's I, powerful yeah that's powerful you envisioned it yeah so I basically just put myself in the in the fan shoes mm -hmm. and it's like it just made me think like your picture on my wall okay so if, if a kid is a fan of rap he's probably got pictures of you know mm -hmm. Rappers on his wall mm -hmm. So that kind of Just brought me into the Instantly when I heard it And that's kind of Where I started taking it And then Just I think Trying to It's almost like A miscommunication mm -hmm. Between The, the fan and the, and the artist fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah And it's like You're not They're not seeing it From your side You're not seeing it From their side mm -hmm. And then it just Ends up all bad Because yeah Because the, the, the for the fan You know This is probably The first and last time They'll see you Even your your best fans Will see you 10 or 15 times In life right. I mean that's like Your number one fans yeah. Maybe they'll see you 30 times But you know It's gonna be But so many times They see you right. So for them It's that one time experience And for the artist It's like another person Asking for a picture So I always right. try to Remember that And treat people like Every person like that Encounter matters Yeah. So, so now Let's go out